Good evening. This is DMEB TV News, live from our studio in Banyolili. And I am your presenter, Maria Makeda. First, the headlines. Police arrest six suspects for alleged committing robbery. Story of Gambian immigrant doing well in America. First, oil production. Senegal's Minister of Energy Petroleum and Mining joins Africa Energy Week 2024. South Africa's Ramaphosa to be sworn in as president. A wildfire in New Mexico led to evacuation. This is our top headline. Now the news in details. Police arrest six suspects for alleged committing robbery. The aim of the press briefing is to update and as well enlighten the public of the new method of using taxi to rob people. Listen to the rest of the story. Welcome to our Kairaba police station. Canvin Division of the Gandhi Police Force. We are here this morning to brief, brief the media by extension the nation on the alleged robbery with violence using taxi. Of recent, the Gandhi Police Force, especially during uh, the Kurita Feast, have uh, put in place a lot of modalities and operations to ensure that people living in the Gambia and Gambians enjoy their Kurita in peace and harmony. And for this reason, the Gambia Police Force has all around been within especially the Combo area or the Greater Banyol area to ensure that the collective feast is celebrated in that peace. However, we are aware that most people, especially criminals, would use this opportunity to take advantage of the circumstance and take advantage of the feast. For many people will be going out, leaving their compounds, and many people will be going out with their gadgets, they will be stealing and in criminal relation. However, the KMC, KM Police Division, headed by the Commissioner here behind me, Commissioner Sambajao, and we have the Regional Crime Officer, Pate Jalo, Pate ba, who are going to brief us. Pate ba is the Regional Crime Officer, head of the CID in the region, he will lead us into the briefing of the circumstance surrounding this alleged robbery as far as the investigation is concerned. We will what happened is uh, the complainant by Nyas ba, and his friends from Abuko wanted a taxi to run their service for five days. They agreed with Abubakar Toure, the principal suspect in this case. Who does not have a taxi but had a friend who had a taxi he went to that friend and then the friend lent him the vehicle as we locally call zero and then charged by us ten thousand dollars for the five days he collected his friends and then arranged with the taxi driver that is the principal suspect who has already collected the taxi and then they boarded the vehicle and then they were in town until at such a time around 2300 hours towards midnight on the 16th not knowing this abdrah man the principal suspect had made an arrangement with his counterparts also who are in town that they should hire an order taxi to go and ambush them he and his passengers at the place where the scene took place. As they made this arrangement, that team also, through the other suspect, Demba Jaju, who also lent a vehicle from his friend from Fajikunda. And then they also boarded that vehicle. They went ahead of them and waited for them along that mile seven road towards Radio Gambia. As if their vehicle had a breakdown in the middle of the road, that's where they parked. Then communication was between them now, this Demba, and then Toure. As Toure and his passengers arrived, they stopped as if they are just to find out 
try to drive a relationship, what happened? Then those of his counterparts in, doubt, in, in Demba's vehicle opened and then rushed onto this other vehicle. And then opened the doors and then spray them with paper powder into his eyes. That is the eyes of by Nyasba, the complainer. And then with a knife point that don't don't move. If you move, we'll harm you. And then that's the way they rob them of their properties. Three mobile phones, a bag plus $40,000 and they went into their vehicle and then drove away. Now Abdurrahman Abubakar Toure, the principal suspect, pretending that he does not know them, now said, let's go to the police at Bakau police station. Before they arrived to the police, it was already on the 17th. That was on Monday. And the matter was reported. As the matter was reported, our Ebo Regional Commissioner now make arrangement for a team to be formed and then we follow the matter because it appears to be a very serious matter, robbery with violence, that we cannot just pay a blind eye to. With his coordination, he contacted me. I was at home thinking that probably my region is very safe because we are in Tobaski, he just called me and then I realized that there is a job to do now. I called the in charge Bakau CID, Buba Fal, Inspector Buba Fal, who also form of his team, and then we went into the matter. As we start questioning the, this driver, Abubakar Abu Bakar Toure, we realized that in fact he is part of them. And then he confessed and then started revealing the names of his counterparts. I contacted the regional commissioner and then the tax force were mobilized with the anti-crime at Kotu. We formed a team to search for them in town with the help of the principal suspect now, Abu Bakar Toure. He led us to Fajikunda or to any other area that we might find them. And luckily, we were able to arrest all of them. As highlighted by the regional crime officer, this incident happened early hours of the 17th. And I received the report immediately when the matter was reported at Bakau Police Station. And then looking at the seriousness of the incident, I could not waste time but to contact my regional crime officer and instruct him that this is a matter that he should handle. It cannot be left in the hands of the junior CID officers alone. And quickly he responded to Bakau police station and he gave me feedback that is at Bakau. Then the coordination began. Where we contacted, I contacted the regional patrol team we have in KM here, also the anti-crime, to make sure that the CID officers are enforced to go after these notorious criminals. Eventually, within a couple of hours, a good number of them were arrested in different places within the region and are currently detained at Bakau police station, helping the police in their investigation. As a regional command, like he highlighted, when festive occasions are happening, we the police are not meant to be enjoying, but are meant to be on high alert, because these are some of the things that we would anticipate that they are likely to happen. So it's because we, we are on high alert, and we have to seize the liberty of officers working in this region not to enjoy the festive occasion but to allow the civilians to enjoy this is why we had to make this breakthrough within a very short period so as a security as security heads of this region we are not going to relent in pursuing this kind of notorious criminals 
the Gambian immigrant Abdullah Baro has been recognized by the Wisconsin Department of Agriculture. Maria Makita filed in this report. Abdullah Baro, a Gambian immigrant, has been recognized by the Wisconsin Department of Agriculture, Trade and Consumer Protection as one of the department's employees of the year, after the impressive work he has done for the department by serving as an IT security analyst and systems administrator. Abdullah reviews and analyzes security locks from multiple systems, including firewalls, VPNs, and endpoint detection and response EDR software. He ensures the overall cybersecurity posture of the network is secure and that systems are functioning properly. The, de de the department says in an update on its official Facebook page. Abdullah says he likes that his job is practical, requiring proactive thinking and taking actions to mitigate problems before they have an impact while ensuring optimal business function. However, Abdullah is also responsible for software deployments, ensuring that all systems, software, and TLS certificates are up to date. He added that he has learned to collaborate and work with IT personnel at different agencies for their common shared cybersecurity goals for the state. For GMEB TV, I am Paria We will go on a short break and we will be right back. Welcome back. This is DMEB TV News live from our studio in Banjulinde. Now news within Africa. Following first oil production, Senegal's Minister of Energy, Petroleum and Mining joins Africa Energy Week 2024. Our reports on this story. Senegal Minister of Energy, Petroleum and Mining Birame Sulejo will participate in African Energy Week. Invest in African Energy 2024 Conference, Africa's premier event for the energy sector taking place from 8 to 4th November in Cape Town. Minister Job is expected to unpack the critical role oil and gas plays across the MSGBC region, providing insight into project development and future investment opportunities. Minister Joe's participation comes as the country celebrates a new milestone in oil and gas industry, with global energy company Woodside Energy commencing oil production from Sengomar Seng Field Development, Senegal inaugural offshore oil project, representing a crucial step towards bolstering Tearing energy security across the MSGBC region. The start of production is poised to use in a new era of industrialization and economic growth in Senegal. During the AU Invest in Africa's Energy 2024, Minister Job will provide insight into the milestone achieved as well as the nation's upcoming oil and gas production agenda. South Africa's Ramaphosa to be sworn in as president. Cyril Ramaphosa has been re-elected as South Africa's president for the second term. Say Mohamed Jaju has the rest of the story. Cyril Ramaphosa has been re-elected as South Africa's president for his second term after his party struck a last-minute deal with political rivals. Ramaphosa's African National Congress, which came to power in 1994 after winning a decades-long battle against apartheid, lost its majority for the first time in an election last month and spent two weeks locked in intensive behind-the-scenes talks with other parties. As the newly elected parliament convened on Friday, Democratic Alliance leader John Stenhousen said his wide-led main opposition party formally signed a governing agreement with the ANC and part of it will make Ramaphosa president. On Wednesday, 19th June 2024, President-elect Siri Ramaphosa will be inaugurated at the president, as the president of South Africa during a public swearing-in ceremony at the Union Buildings in Swani, Gauteng. The swearing-in, which is conducted by Chief Justice Raymond Zendu in the Nelson Mandela Amphitheater, 
officially signifies the start of the seventh theme titled 30 years of democracy partnership and growth follows Ramaphosa's election as president by parliament at its first sitting on friday 14th june 2024 after the oath of office or affirmation, the newly sworn in president will then deliver his inaugural address, which may give some hints about the direction that the newly formed administration may take. Reporting for GMV TV, I am Sam Mohamed Jai. Now to our international stories. A welfare in New Mexico led to evacuation. Roughly 500 residents in a village called Ridoso. Our town has the rest of the story. A dangerous heat wave is scorching part of the Midwest and the Northeast as temperature in some western and south eastern cities have been hit triple digits. 1,400 structures have been lost in South Fork Fire, New Mexico official says. Approximately 1,400 have been lost and about 8,000 people have been evacuated due to the South Fork Fire burning near Rodoso, New Mexico, local officials said in an update. This is an increase from 500 damaged structures announced by government Michelle's Lujan Kisham during a briefing on Tuesday afternoon. The South Fork Fire is now estimated 15,276 across and is 0% contained according to New Mexico Forestry Update. Tuesday, fire activity included crowning and long-range sporting which increased the fire's foot said forestry officials. Respond crew were able to directly engage areas of the fire's footprint when conditions allowed Tuesday, the forestry update said. Reporting for GMEB TV, I am Awatar. We will go on a short commercial break and we will be back. Live from our studio in Banjulindi. Moving on, now to our world of sports. Borussia Dortmund shows interest in Newcastle and Gambia Yankuba Minte. Share Mohamed Jadu reports. Bundesliga champions Borussia Dortmund are reportedly interested in Newcastle and Gambian Yankuma Minte, according to Sky Sports German football transfer news specialist Florian Plenerberg. Borussia Dortmund is most noted for its football team that plays in Bundesliga. Dortmund is one of the most successful clubs in German football history. However, Borussia Dortmund's new coach, Nuri Sahin, is familiar with the 19-year-old. Many clubs have already shown interest in Minde. Reporting for GMB TV, I am Sam Mohamed Jal. Kylian Mbappe broke his nose in France's opening game of Euro 2024 and will likely wear a carbon fever mask to continue playing. Mohamed Diagi filed in this report. Kylian Mbappe broke his nose in France's opening game of Euro 2024 after colliding with Calvin Danso's soldier in the one not victory against Austria on Monday. Mbappe, who was replaced by Oliver Giroud late on. Mbappe was taken to Dusseldorf Hospital and returned to the French base in Parabon. Mbappe will likely wear a carbon fiber mask to continue playing. He joins other soccer stars who have worn protective masks, including Son Heung Ming, Jesco Guardiola, Paul Gascoigne, Antonio Rudiger, and Perry Emerick Aubameyang, who used masks following facial injuries. Reporting for GMB TV, I am Sam Mohamed Jad. This is all we have for you, but before we go, a recap of our top headlines. Police are a sixth suspect for alleged robbery. Story of Gambian immigrant doing well in America. First oil production. Senegal's Minister of Energy, Petroleum and Mining joins Africa Energy Week 2024. South Africa's Ramaphosa to be sworn in as president. A wildfire in New Mexico led to evacuation. This is all we have for you. On behalf of our producer and the entire production team, we wish you a great evening. Stay tuned on GMEB TV and I am your presenter Maria Makeda.